Hi, this is Wee4N3 here with Digital Dojos. Today I'm going to be showing you one new tag and a basic introduction to CSS. So the tag I'll show you is the div tag. It's D-I-V. It has a closing tag, and in here we'll type in text. You'll see it hasn't styled or done anything to our, te our text at all. And that's because a div tag is basically just a container. It just holds um, chunks of text together and allows you to style them. Almost all web pages are held together by div tags and they're kind of grouped in sections of like a header, a footer, sidebars, um, or however the web designers done it, but that's the most commonly common way. So we've got our text, but we've got to apply CSS to our text. So CSS has to be able to um, determine the difference between different div tags. We don't want all our div tags to look exactly the same. So we'll set a class to allow it to um, realize it's a unique separate div tag from the other ones. We'll just name it test and now we've got to include our style sheet and I've done this automatically or already rather but you just do a link tag with the rel equals style sheet type equals text slash css and href equals style dot css. This basically just include says include a style sheet and it's going to be text and css and here's where it's located. So if you wanted to name your style sheet something else, you could just change the name here. But I'm going to name mine style.css. So I'll create that style.css. And I'll just open that down at the bottom. So here we've got our empty CSS file and our index.html. So now in our CSS, we have to reference this test um, class. So we'll type in period, test, then opening curly bracket, and closing curly bracket. And you'll see this is how I like to format my CSS. I kind of do two enters and then indent each line. This is pretty much the most common way people do it. I'd recommend this way. This is how I like to, to read my CSS, but you can also do it in line if you like. Um, I'd recommend just trying out a couple different ways and see which one you like the best and you find the easiest to read. But from my experience, 95% of people write CSS this way. So we will add a couple uh, different attributes to the test class to modify our text. So first we'll add, we'll change the color of the text. We'll change color and it's, you'll see it's auto-suggested some different colors for us. Um, you can use just uh, plain name colors just like this and you'll see it's change it to yellow. But on the end of this we should add a semicolon. So it's change our text to yellow but we can also type in a hexadecimal value. So here's a random one. We'll see it's kind of a purpley blue. So um, this is how you lay out um, individual defined CSS attributes. So we've got our, our CSS attribute and then a colon and then the CSS attribute value and then a semicolon. So that's how you syntax your CSS. So after the color attribute, I'll show you font size. You'll see one thing that's very nice and handy about learning CSS and having a code editor that suggests tags automatically is you can kind of learn on the fly. You'll see here's all these different tags you can apply. And it's a great way to learn CSS. That's pretty much how I learned. I kind of taught myself within Dreamweaver just going through all the different auto-suggested tags. But we'll do font size and we'll set it to 24 pixels. And you'll see it's increased the size for us over here. We can change it to 30 pixels. And it's even bigger now. You can also specify font size in EMs. So 1 EM is equal to 14 pixels. So there's 14 pixels. And if we did 2, that'd be 28 pixels. So it's even bigger. And 3, even bigger. Um, you can also add decimals to EMs. You could do like 1.5. And you'll see if I add 1.59, the text will get even bigger might be hard to see on the video, but it slightly got bigger. So EMs are handy for like headings or when you normally be doing a, a really large um, pixel value. So I'll just set that to two EMs for now. So now I'll show you font weight. Um, this will allow you to make your text bold. You can see it's got all these different um, 1 through 900 and bolder, bolder, normal. Um, these these smaller values, you kind of have a hard time telling the difference, but basically bold 
is probably the most common one you'll ever use. It's probably the only one you'll ever use with font weight. It's the only one I've ever used. Um, so after font weight, I can show you a border. Now a border will set a border around the entire div tag, and it won't just uh, modify the text. So we'll set a one pixel border of, uh, it's going to be solid, and it's going to be black. And you'll see it's added the border here. This is where our div tag is. So this is the exact size of our div tag. You can also specify border um, where you want it to be. So you could do dash right on the uh, border tag and see it's only got the border on the right or left. And there's also top and bottom. So I'll just have it go to all of them. So now I'll show you how to change the width and height of div tags. So you can actually change um, set the width and height with CSS instead of because by default the div tag will be as small as it can be um, you'll see it, it's not stretching down our whole page so we can set our width in pixels, EMs, or percentages so we can set it to 50% it'll be 50% wide 50% of the width of the page I can change it to pixels we can do um, 350 pixels so it's 350 pixels wide and now we'll set the height and we'll set the height to 500 pixels so you'll see now it's 500 pixels wide uh, 500 pixels tall and 350 wide so now I'll show you the background color there's background um, and background color and background image um, you can use background colors just on background um, and it'll work just fine but it's best to do color to specify the color so you can set the color you can set the color to black and I'll show you how to do a background image so to do an image you can set the URL so you'll type background image and then URL parentheses and within the parentheses you can you don't have to do single quotes here I like to I don't know why um, but here you can put in an image and it'll set it as the background and you'll see it's repeated the image over and over you can adjust the background by choosing background repeat and this will allow you to repeat on the x-axis repeat on the y repeat or don't repeat so if you do no repeat you'll see it's only done it once it hasn't repeated at all you can do repeat x and it'll repeat it horizontally on the x-axis or repeat y so I'll change it back to no repeat. So it's got the one um, just image right there. So then you can change your background position. You can set it to center. And then your image would be centered within here. So background images, usually you wouldn't have a small image like this. You might have a, a gradient for your background, a large gradient, um, or something like that. So I'll just remove these. Um, Actually, I'll show you one little quick tip within here. You can actually set the background color and image. So you could set the color to black. Um, so that here you can see it's got a black and around our image. But it's also very handy if, say, you have a, a gray to black gradient. You could kind of set a background color in between the gray and the black. So while the background image is still loading, the user would see a color similar to that. So instead of seeing just a plain white background, they'd see a color similar to your background image while that's still loading. So it kind of gives the appearance of it loading quicker. That might be kind of hard to understand, but oh well. So I'll show you two more things before we conclude this video, and that's padding and margins. Padding is spacing on the inside of the div tag and margin spacing on the outside. So I'll say a padding of 15 pixels. You'll see it's pushed this text over 15 pixels from the left and 15 pixels from the top and it's actually done the same down here and here but you can't see so I'll remove these as you can see it's got 15 pixels here so if we remove this tag you'll see it's back here and then we can put the padding back and it's got the 15 pixels here 15 pixels here 15 pixels here so there's padding which is on the inside now margins are on the outside so I'll set this to 15 pixels as well and you'll see it's pushed the entire div right 15 pixels in this direction, down 15 pixels here, 
and just push it in 15 pixels on the right. So if we set this even higher, it's going to push it in in these directions still. It's going to make it smaller. So we could set it to 80. It's just going to keep pushing it 80 pixels here, 80 here, and 80 here. It's just going to keep smushing it down, um, spacing it from everything else. And with these, it's a lot like the border attribute. You can choose just to do it on the right. So 80 pixels on the right. You could do padding top. So now it's got 15 pixels on the top and none on the left. And that'll conclude this video. With pretty much everything I've shown you so far, you could really create a really advanced website. The only thing that might be holding you back is kind of just understanding. Um, it takes a lot of ex just practice and experience to really get down to where you can create a design. I'm not very creative. I have trouble with designs, but I've, I know enough CSS to kind of get me by. But um, just kind of practice, maybe download some free CSS templates and mess with those. That's a great way to learn. And just kind of mess with some values and see what changes what. That'll conclude this video. I'm Wave 493 Make sure to check out digitaldojos.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.